Y'all, Captain Glenn has been a very versatile sea captain. He's done things. He's pitched in whenever he's needed to. He's ate. He's eaten matzo brai um, and all types of flatbreads. And now we have a new talent using his face as a coaster. Human coaster. (laughs) (laughs) A human coaster. I laughed. I oh. laughed like a fool. I watched I, that like three times. It was so funny. And the and the and how long it took for <laughs> Alex to say like he said, it's almost like he saw a bedside table there. <laughs> like he just saw Captain Glid's flat forehead and went, Yeah, that looks That's like a that, table. That looks like that thing I used to sip that sock on in my room. When I would jerk off with it. Yeah. With the long hair just flowing, that always looked like Ooh. a fan was blowing on him. God. God. Um, Where are we? But he kept setting it, and at one point, put it on Glenn's face, and he's like, what's up, dude? And then he, then, drunk subtitles, oh, it's just it, mobos, mobos. Y'all, they got schnockered the first night. This is BDSM. This is Below Deck Sailing Yacht. Or BDSY. This is, this is potato, potato. Yeah. Season one, episode three, The King is Back. The King is Back. You know what that's from, right? That's uh, Gary's last name. Oh, his last name is Gary King? King? Uh-huh. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I'm going to say this. I watched this and I thought... Who goes to a new job or a place of employment, even if it is a fun place like a like a boat or, I don't know, a summer camp? Who goes to the first night of employment and gets so blasted the first night that they're I don't know. It's quite vom- unprofessional. <laughs> vomiting everywhere. <laughs> I hope that person was terminated. <laughs> You know what? They were hired back for three summers and the best (laughs) piano coach they had. (laughs) It was me. (laughs) In my defense. (laughs) I was 26 years old. 26. I think you're 26. Yeah. That's what you do your first night. I got wasted. And the first night I was hired at the arts camp, I puked all over the floor. And, the, and I tried it, to clean it up above the someone's di- doorknob, above, above the director's bedroom, and she said, "It sounded like somebody threw up last night in the hallway." And that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. So I I understand I understand <laughs> needing to let loose. Um. <sighs> oh. <laughs> And then one of the cabin counselors came out and was just talking to you in Italian because she's Italian. Yeah. And then you were so drunk, you actually became fluent in your old days of Italian. Yeah. So then like, you started Parlo, spinning, Parlo, like, mangiare. You're just talking to her. <laughs> and, I, and someone, my roommate said, isn't that your friend? And I kind of knew you, but we were just, and I was like, I don't know her. <laughs> yeah. No one wanted to know me. They're like, wait, is that the guy who got really drunk on the first <laughs> night? <laughs> but you and know then, what? You showed up with your talent, and they realized you were the best pianist they had. And by the end of the summer, I wasn't the guy who got drunk on the first night. I was that slut who fucked like 11 guys yeah. and, brought, and brought them back to the cottage. Yeah, yeah. So, y'all, growth is possible. Growth is possible. <laughs> so we, we, we can expect big things from this crew. <laughs> I will say BDSY brings the joy back in below deck. Uh, yeah. there's there's in between Gary and Daisy and Glenn and Colin, there's just like it's it's just so not stuffy. There's there's no Captain Sandy to kind of like ho hum over everybody and and and, and there's not any 
you know, because Captain Lee, we love Captain Lee, but he runs a ship with a little bit of fear. It's very formal. Yeah. And formal. And there's not any of that. Yeah. 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 It's um, good. Again, a it's, nice Canadian ship. Because Glenn is a nice Canadian. Um, yeah. So a couple things here. Do we have any announcements or should we just like get into it? Uh, get into what it. What is this coming out? I, uh, ooh, I just want to, I want to remind because people that. Because I went the Carol Burnett ninetieth birthday party on NBC that airs on Wednesday, so that'll be tomorrow. This airs on Tuesday. Make, make sure you say you did not star in it. Uh, so. I'm not starring it, y'all. I just might be in the audience, and you might see me queen out when. Um, well, I can't tell you, but it involved Bernadette Peters and singing. So I definitely. Uh, uh, oh, the, the, <laughs> you, you'd, I wish you'd give me a couple more hints. <laughs> Let's just say is that thing like when 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 it was kind of the same reaction, and when I say this, you're gonna understand because you've lived it. That kind of the same reaction when we were in Anaheim or in Orange County, a very conservative part of California, and in the dark at a Celine Dion concert, we just heard the whispers in the morning, yeah. and, and, and I Jake, felt vertigo, <laughs> <laughs> and Jake fucking broke out. Yeah. No, my legs gave out from under me. <laughs> and I went, oh. No, and, I, and like three blue hair women from Orange County that could afford the seats that we bought and put on our credit cards, looked yeah. at you and judged. That's the kind of and, reaction and I had. Said, said, Helen, can we gay bash? <laughs> Marjorie, I told you we could only do that once. Yeah. Um, no, that anyway. was... Yeah, when your when your legs give way after hearing the open bars of something, the opening bars, that's something. It's called um, Carol Burnett. It's on NBC. Carol Burnett, ninety years of laughter and love. So you can watch I'll it on have to NBC. tape it. Just fast forward over your segments. <laughs> Again, Carl's wives. I'm not in the show. Remember, I know some of you think we are. Jake and I aren't famous. We're, we're just we're just trash in front of a mic. It's like I went to a dermatologist today and she said, Oh, so you do a podcast? And I said, Yeah. And she said, So, um, do you do it like in a studio? Do you do it like in this with the microphone? No. And I went, No. No. We just do it in my living my, in my I said we just do it in my best friend's living room. Oh. oh. And then she's like, <laughs> and then she's like, you could tell that she didn't ask, but she wanted to do that kind of same thing your mom does with Cameo, where she goes, and you Is make that a money? scam? Yeah. You make money from this? I'm like, yeah, we we tour around the country, and but we just do it in his living room. It's very informal. You should have what said, if, one of the biggest things that happened is we had a moth fly in, in, yeah. in and it was a huge deal. Yeah, Mothgate. I should have said that. Mothgate. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Big deal. Yeah, Moth, y'all can you can still see Mothgate on our Instagram if you scroll down a little bit. Um, some of you are still rejoicing in in our horror. Um, uh, completely, completely terrified. I want to Iron- I want to tell you if you have a moth flies r- flies right at you, you'd have the same reaction. <laughs> I want to tell everyone that. Show me a person who just goes. Oh, look, Shanice, it's a moth. Oh, and it just sits on their nose. And does a dive bomb towards you like it did to me. Someone sent us a clip of the Simpsons, of those two little gay boys (laughs) reacting to a moth. moth! (laughs) And it was a read. And it was fair. It was fair, but y'all have been just brutal. Just brutal (laughs) at our pain. It was humiliating. (laughs) I thought we would get some sympathy, but not one, not even one of you. People have been laughing at it. Yeah. Anyway. I guess that's what we're here for. Um, we're here for. I think that's it as far as um, uh, should we talk about? Well, I will say it's... we just did you, me, and my ex before this, and y'all, Yimmy, you season or episode two is delivering yeah, all the, the delivering. message. It's yeah. really, really, really good. That's on our eight dollar Patreon. Yeah. Also, y'all, our charity for this month is the Drag Defense Fund uh, in, in cooperation with the ACLU. They are doing a digital worldwide moment May 7th. Mark your calendars. We're not doing a moment, but we are watching their moment on Discord and chatting about it'll, it with you. I'm sure it'll go just like Love is Blind went. <laughs> just well. Perfectly. I'm I'm going to be telling everybody about how to do Discord if you're a Carl's wife and it scares you. Um, don't <coughs> be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Don't be afraid. Oh, my hand and we're <laughs> We need to move on. I, I, have, okay. I, I need to talk about this episode too much. Okay. So, um, besides this, besides the human coaster moment, which I think is probably going to go in, in the franchise, one of the most ridiculously dumb things I've ever seen. It was just yeah. so weird. And I loved it. Um, I think we also had kind of a complete celebration. Y'all, I've never been so excited as when that kind of upbeat Pirates of the Caribbean music starts playing, when they start sailing. And I was like, we're sailing! The boat came back and Colin did it all. He brought us back from the brink. It was exciting. I'm not going to lie. I did, I did feel like some Hans Zimmer was in. I think that's Hans Zimmer who wrote that was in order. I don't, I don't remember. I, think, I should be. Hey, Siri, who wrote the soundtrack to Pirates of the Caribbean? Here's an answer from allmusic.com. The soundtrack for Pirates of the Caribbean was originally composed by Alan Silvestri. Alan, Alan Silvestri. Silvestri. Hey, Siri, stop. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He did that. I love him. He did Forrest Gump. As well, he did all the thing to the cosmos, the Seth MacFarlane. I love that soundtrack. We're in a weird area. We're in a weird area. Let's please yeah. move on. Let's please um, move on. But anyway, I I also think that I have a feeling that they. I know they, we saw Daisy putting the rods for things not to slip when they heal when the ship heals. Um, I think part of the filming is to get all of that footage. I think they intentionally do it. It, it oh. excites me every single time. I, I never, it's like watching, you know how I feel about watching y'all sometimes when I did this a lot, when I was going through my dad and breakup, I would just watch people falling on YouTube because it make, gives me so much joy. It's Why that is hearing thing. that very sad? <laughs> 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 Why is just hearing that fact extremely <laughs> Extremely I sad. Do. I love watching fall people fall on YouTube though. I to do. me, I have to know that they're okay. No, yes, they're. We <clears throat> see that they're okay. Yeah. What? Wow. I don't want people to just fall and get concussions. What do you think I am, an asshole? That's what I want to watch. Um, I want to watch true crime shows about women poisoning their husbands. That's what I enjoy watching. <laughs> well, because I was, I was actually, um. I was actually pretty upset whenever Lucy fell out because I was worried at first because that was all <gasps> y'all. She didn't just slip out of the bed. She literally like just fucking planted it. Did you see what happened to her back? It looked terrible. She oh scraped my it. God. It looks terrible. like she like it looked like a plug in into some antique machine. <laughs> I thought it looked very similar when you came home when you come home from Slammers. Yeah, those are West those are love ball. taps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They I tell sometimes you not they to just... get. I say, don't get in the sling poodle. Yeah. Well, you get used to them. So, um, I guess that I just that, before we get into tea bags, the, I just wanted to bring up those things. Um, and I think we're I hopefully we're gonna have a good season this year. Um, last season was kind of shitty because of Ashley. Um. And she just made everyone kind of miserable. Oh, yeah. Um, but I hope, I think these stews are going to bring it. I mean, they do part. Mads is throwing up with the first night. I think Lucy was obviously, I think Lucy oh, threw up too. Did, okay. Th and this is, this is basically my first tea bag. Daisy is wasted, gone. She can't even say words. But she still manages to take care of both of her stews while hey. being drop dead drunk. Yeah. And she puts up the little divider for Lucy. <laughs> so she won't fall in the middle of the night. I I, I think those Lucy, are probably. Remember, Lucy said she was very, she's a klutzy one, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Let's Lucy be honest. Lucy the big boobed wonder. <laughs> um. I would make you put one of those up if we. If I were think on the top those box. are necessary. I would. I think I had them as a child because I moved a lot when I when I slept and we had bunk beds. We had those because you're, I was yeah. my mother was afraid I would fall off. You're a fitful sleeper. I am quite a fitful sleeper. It's I true. mean, 
it's better for me to be on the bottom bunk for for a lot of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Write your own joke here, folks. <laughs> oh, um, I think, I mean, my first feedback was just all the drinking as well. I think, um, and in the middle of this, um, while everyone's drunk, here comes Gary. Boy. And did you, did you kind of feel like Gary was a little bit chip on his shoulder because he had missed the first charter? He was. And and he yeah. was trying to get all the hot goss. What happened? Someone tell me everything. He was like, oh, everybody, let's party. And everybody's like, we're wrecked. We're going to bed. He was, he was just like, oh, tell me everything that's happened. Tell me all the gossip. <laughs> oh. Uh, so anyway, speaking of his entrance, besides uh, he, he immediately, the first thing he does is – Spoon, his same-sex partner in life, Colin. Oh, do you think he put his dick up against his butt? No. Well, maybe. Are, I think so. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you they felt each other's dicks on each other's butt. Oh, totally. They have. They have no boundaries. But not in a sexual way. They're just friends. Yeah. Sometimes just, a man can do that with another man, and it's not sexual at all. Yeah. It's just guy. It's just bros. <laughs> it's just, just bro bros talk. being bros. Friends bros being just friends. Bros being bros. Yeah. And if you put your mouth on it, unfortunately, is it by accident? Sometimes things happen. Just a friendly embrace. It's the sea. Who knows? <sighs> who knows? So, and then he goes immediately to to see Daisy, who is also on over, and she's yeah. sounding like this. Yeah. <laughs> and that he's like, I don't know. Like we the- butted heads. We touched tongues. Who knows what'll happen? <laughs> who knows? You said it made her sound like the woman from um, Extreme Sisters. Oh, <laughs> girls, <laughs> you're going to be good waitresses for me. <laughs> the one who was, who was like, who was like a, the Italian, the, the Italian restaurant. Uh, girls, I want you to do this for me. <laughs> Where's me parrot? <laughs> um, <laughs> the parrot's name was Ravioli. Ravioli, Ravioli. was his name. When the moon is your eye, like, ah! really. hush. Okay, we told you no more singing. Okay, pizza pie, pizza pie. <laughs> I miss her. I miss her too. Uh, so girls, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna, y'all. He goes basically Daisy. Daisy just like don't touch me. I'm happy to see you, but and I think y'all, she's missed him too. She this has. this crew really does love each other. Um, in a but Daisy way. is a Daisy is a poodle. Like I'm actually much more of a Gary. You are. I, I'm just a love all. Well, I'm a drunk. I'm a share all. Like lovey drunk. Daisy and Poodle are much more. They're much more cat energy. We're not going to yeah. show you we love you. We're not. And we're going to li- we're going to make out in front of everybody in front of you. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make out with other people in front of you and not care about it. Yep. Um. What's was that your tea bag? Uh, let's see. I was going to talk about, and then I was going to talk about, I mean, the ship thing. It was, we kind of are, it's not that big of a tea bag, but it was, it was, I will say I was, it this was is what I love saying. about, the, yes, I think this show, it feels like you're, you're brought back into the world of the elements yeah. and that, and that these are people on a ship in the middle of this vast ocean and they have to make it work or uh, it feels like what love is blind is, tries to be. Do you choose this person as your partner? Or say goodbye forever. Walk away forever. If, if walk away. It feels like, do you chance a sail on the sea or drown in the darky, murky water? Like, it feels like there's darky, only- Darky, murky water? Darky, murky water, yeah. Dark, murky water, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, y'all, but the sea trial and everything works. It does. And it's wonderful. And Colin's amazing. Um, my- What's your uh, next one? My next one is- about we can talk about this kind of the Gary Chase kerfuffle. This all started whenever Chase was talking about making out with Mads and Al. It's interesting, even though Alex said he was making out with Daisy. Imme- you're so right. Immediately once Gary found out that the other guys yeah. were making pissing out contest. with other girls, it's a pissing contest. Yeah, it's Gary. 
And Gary's not a, he's a great worker and a really good first mate. He's not really a teacher. Like Gary no. would not do well on a sandy boat. No, he would not. Um, and, but what he does is just tell people what to do. He tells yeah. people to do in a very efficient manner. Yeah, the problem funny. here is Chase has some experience under his belt. And on the first charter, he kind of figured out his place of kind of telling Alex what to do when Colin wasn't around. That's not what Gary likes. That is not what Gary likes. It is. You all. do it what Gary tells you to do. And by the end, you're having a really good time. But you need to know that this is not any type of like collaborative art form. This that's is, a he great does. way to put. It. This is not a collaborative artistic thing. Yeah. It is this way or no way. It's Gary's way. He even says that. So I think, I think, was he a little rough with Chase and kind of shitty? Ooh. Yeah, say, say I that think he was. Again. Say was that he sentence. rough with Chase? Ooh, yeah. He used the back of his hand instead of the front of his Ooh. hand. I, Gary is still hot. Okay, to me. both of us need to get laid. Yeah, we, yeah, that's true. We do. Um, so the uh, that's where I was, and I thought Chase might have been a little, a little too, um, a little too taken aback by if this is so how this, things are going to be. So, what did you read this as? Did you read this as Gary being too much, or Chase wanting to swing his dick too much? Um, I think it's just the from what I know of Gary. The if if Gary would have been there first, it would have been very clear how things worked, and I think Chase would have adapted pretty quickly. Um, mm. and now since Chase felt like he had a little bit of he knew the boat, mm -hmm. and he was kind of he had a little bit of ownership in what he was doing. Do I think he's going to work hard? Yes, I think he takes pride in what he does. And and he what he does is very important. So when you criticize him, it feels personal. Yeah. So I think, and like when at the end of the episode when he got criticized for not doing stuff overnight when Alex and because y'all the night person is never going to do shit. That's going to be they always have this list of duties, but like they're they're watching for the anchor watch and they never really get things done. But so I think Captain Glenn was pointing out things, and that really got in him that. He was being blamed for it. So yeah. he took it personally. And I understand it. Um, I think Colin even said, you know, you probably need to, you need to figure out how to train him and do that. And Gary has no intention of doing that. That's not That's how not he what Gary them. does. No, yeah. it's not. So we'll see. What do you think? I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that it's, um, I think, I don't think it's going to be a, uh, I don't think it's going to be a thing of the season because Chance has, it would be more of an issue, I think, honestly, if Chance was the one who had been Chase. making out, with, or Chase, I'm sorry, I wrote it wrong. If Chase, <laughs> if Chase had been the one that um, was making out with, with Daisy, I think it would be more of a thing, but because he's yeah. starting to couple up with Mads, but I think we saw it next week, Gary is totally going to make out with Mads just to yeah. fuck over Chase. Well, that and he has no concept of bro code at all. At all. That's and, just not And Chase is going to get butthurt about it. Yep. Y'all, yep. let's take a little commercial and we'll be right back. Okay. How dare, how dare the Chiron labeling people mention Justin Guarini as Justin charter guest that is my tea bag is can we not acknowledge an american some respect on justin guarini's name yes an american idol and the voice of diet dr pepper it's a cheap one yes. it's on fucking below deck <laughs> i i went i looked him out that's Justin Guarini. That's what I, I knew who that was. Justin Guarini. God, I had such a crush on him. Runner up of the first American Idol. Yes. Besides Kelly Clarkson, the, 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 one of the most famous reality shows stars at the time. Yes, it was 20 years ago. But, but fuck you for not no one, no one knowing who he was. He's still relevant. How many Instagram followers? I bet he has a lot. 
I thoroughly enjoyed him. He's also in one of the worst films ever made from Justin don't, Kelly. Don't you talk about that film badly. <laughs> How <laughs> dare it, you? It's a bad movie. You know, I enjoyed it when I saw it in the theater. They have zero chemistry. <laughs> they had no... I but think they I were saw, friends. It's true. Oh, he has... <clears throat> he only has 36,000 followers. Heresy. That y'all, y'all need to. I think he's got a family now. He's been on Broadway several times. He um, teaches audition classes. Good for him. Good for him. I wonder how he got hooked up with the primary. Um, I don't know. Ooh, yeah, because they oh, were in he's Texas. Doc, he's in his Dr Pepper outfit, so that means he's about to do another commercial. I think those those. The commercials are hilarious. But when I first saw it, I was like, who is that? And I went, that's us in one rating. <laughs> I screamed, you know, on my, uh, uh, when I used to have a vision board, um, a Dr. Pepper commercial is on as a commercial actor. I just want to be in a Dr. Pepper commercial. They, I don't, don't think I'm really their demographic. What is their um, demo? Straight guys. They always spend sponsors. Yeah, sport you're things. Definitely not there. Oh, no, but and still, I would love to be in a Dr. Pepper commercial. That would be my dream as a commercial actor. And I wanted to sing I'm a Pepper. Maybe you could be the version of him in like 10 years. No. <laughs> the older version. <laughs> no. When the Pepper guys let himself go a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> I think at this point, maybe I can be on the diet, Dr. Pepper one, and j maybe Justin Guarini would sing to me and I could react to something. That'd be fun. Yeah. I probably still won't get it. Let's be honest. I'm <laughs> we're not Dr. Pepper. Let's not just say this. Me. You're very specific. Yeah. They don't usually go the what my agent always sends me out for the quote, fabulous role. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> that's what it's called. That's code for gay. That's called for. That's called for. Hey, faggot. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they say in commercials. They're like, uh, they're like, they'll say, you know, you know, enterprise, whatever, office manager who runs a fabulous office. Wow, and that's that not even that's not even parsing <laughs> words. No, that's basically so they can't say we want a lisping, we want a lisping, queen. prancing a lisping. queen, a lisping. lisping. <laughs> you said lisping. Anyway, wow. I'm proud for Justin Guarini. Proud for him. Me too. Oh, I, I, I when I saw him, I was like, "How dare you refer to him as primary? He is Mister Justin Guarini." Your Chiron is an American Idol runner up. He better be star of Broadway. He better be singing in this next episode. I was, and I, you knew no one on that boat knew who he was, and he wouldn't tell them because he's too modest. Because that's Justin Guarini. I never, I never knew how much of a fan of his I was I until am. this moment. And I'm telling you now, if one of you got fucked over at Justin Guarini, I don't want to hear it. Let me believe. I don't either. Let I, me I, believe. I, I think he's a good person. I do too. Yeah. Um, if you we need to move on, pick, if you, anybody's going to pick up his dick, I want to see it. <sighs> What's your next tea bag? That that was mine. <laughs> I was that was I mine was to livid. talk. Livid. That was my. I was livid too. That was mine to talk about after the break. Actually, it was just. It made no sense. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I'm all askew now from that. What was my next one? Um. Okay. Here's the deal. I haven't worked in the service industry that much. Since you were at, uh, what was the over Inner Urban. Under. In, oh, <laughs> over -under. <laughs> so they called me in college. Yeah, there goes over, over Under. under. Um, no, Interurban with the beer Sorry. biscuits. Beer biscuits, still good. Still love those beer biscuits. Worked there for um, a month, right? Three and a half weeks. Um... <laughs> But you know what? Actually, I was in, I worked at the Gap and Gap Kids for like five years. That's true. And so forth. So I guess that's service kind of industry as well in a, in a different way. Yeah. Retail. Um, yeah. Retail. I'm going to say this. I don't want to sit down and eat with y'all at a buffet. I don't want to sit down and eat with the guest at a buffet. I want to sit in the interior lounge or room or whatever it is. The interior lounge, that's the thing in Drag Race. The interior illusions lounge, lounge, yeah. Yes, that's true. But I want to sit in the interior, interior lounge. Saloon. 
Saloon, and I want to talk shit about you and just talk about other shit besides actually sitting and talking to you. I would have found that a complete drag um, because you're still kind of having to perform. And I know that the guests thought this was a really nice thing. Colin says in my 15, 16 years that I've never, I've been moved by it. And so I guess it is something, but like, I understand they thought they were doing a lovely thing, but did you see the stews still had to serve everyone? It didn't, well, it, it should have been buffet. buffet. Meaning we serve ourselves. But I think, I don't think that would have been do, be done on a super yacht. It just, that's not how things are done. Um, I got to say, the way uh, Alicia handled this, I thought she was going to spiral. I did too. She did it so well. She did great. And the food looked really good. Uh, because Colin was helping her make fresh pasta. Did you, did you see this how this is going to bite her in the ass? It is. Did you see how Shit she was like freaking out to Colin? She was going, and then it, and then it, and then, it, and, then yeah. and Colin just kind of shook his head and went, God, "Yeah, so well, awesome. I wouldn't know about that because I'm a chef, but yeah, I'm here." He's so awesome, y'all. I, 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 he's <sighs> still. I'm going to stand by what I said last season. He's going to dick you down better than anybody in this because he's going to take the time to romance you and find all of your sweet spots. <laughs> Wow. I do oh, agree with you, but I <laughs> did not expect it to be said that way. Sweet spots. Ooh. Even yikes. The, even the really wet ones. Stop, stop. <laughs> that are moist. Please, no, 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 we don't say that word. And did you hear her going, do they like muscles? Do they like muscles? Oh, my God. You know what? If they don't, they don't eat it. You know, when she was running around, all I, I wrote this was like, crying cockles and muscles, a lie, a lie, <laughs> <laughs> with her accent. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if she would have been able to pull that together without Colin. Um, no way. But I'm a little worried about her making fresh pasta. God. That is quite time consuming. They don't um, even do that at Olive Garden, and it's fancy. I know that's f where the where the where the where the rich people go. So um, I don't think I have any. I think I have one more, um, and it's about. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Um, it's oh, never mind. I already the the um, riveting. Wow. The, this is uh, entertaining. I'm convinced they. Oh, that was something else. <laughs> no, that's it. That's all I have. <laughs> I know. Wow. This was a, a lot happened in this episode, but it was more like a, it fun. Was, it was actually a, not a lot happened. It was, I, I want to say, plot point wise, you got to think of the 10 minutes of this show's plot. This episode was. Is the boat going to sail or not? Yeah. And I mean that not in a bad way. A lot didn't happen. It was riveting and exciting. To, I was so on the edge of my seat seeing, is this boat going to start? Because we, what this show does well, they know we love Colin. And they know we're rooting for Colin. And they built yeah. up that storyline of Colin trying to prove his... I was just like, please, please let it sail. Please, Colin. It's like watching Dumbo fly. Is he going to make it or fall into the circus and then be put down with a trank dart? <laughs> what happened to Dumbo at the end of that movie? I don't Man, think I remember. He got on elephant meth and killed himself. And that's the show. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger that's warning. Show, Trigger warning. <laughs> Drug use. Elephant suicide. Sorry. Should have been. Should you know have got that, caught that. Caught that earlier. And to this day, his mother is not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> she sings. She just sings "Baby of Mine" to her sleep. Yo, but we just ruined Dumbo. Wasn't there a live action version of that? There was. I never saw it. I didn't really. It doesn't have. Didn't have music, did it? Uh, I don't know if it did. It, they missed the mark. They did that with Cinderella. They did it and do it and do a live action and that. That was dumb. That movie was so good. It would have been so perfect if they just sang in it. <sighs> Lily James can sing. There's actually a recording of her singing A Dream As You Wish on the soundtrack. 
Yeah, you're giving me Disney gay energy, and it's not really not really doing it for me. I right only now. know that because when we did a fairy tale cabaret, gay, I used all the Cinderella soundtrack music as our interludes because it was really gay. Oh, I don't remember that. I think I was getting wigs and costumes ready. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I was less mm-hmm. concerned with that. But yeah, that's all I have to. It was a good episode. You know what I think this was? This was a good episode of building. I think we're seeing the drunkness of the crew. We're seeing it's going to be a good season. I think of BDSM. And Gary's hooking up with Mads next week. Oh God, why is he so hot to me? He just is. You know what? I, there's something about even if they don't have the best body. Is there something? May, oh, Gary's yeah. got a nice body. No, he does. But I mean, he's not like West Hollywood, but he's got a nice no, no, body. No. But there's something about a man who's just confident enough to walk around with his shirt off all the time. No, that's it for Gary. There yeah. is, it is the confidence. And it's also this, he's a hard worker and he kind of says what he means. And he, he says he, he says he has no game and that's his game. Yeah. It's yeah. sad. It is. That's the show. That's the show, everybody. You can go to realitygaze.com. You know the drill. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you listen to po- wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, if you want to listen to this episode ad-free for your pleasure, you can jump on Reality Gaze Plus on Supercast or on um, Patreon at the $8 tier. The $5 tier uh, and the $8 tier both include Love is Blind and will include um, uh, Unaccompanied. What's it called again? <laughs> <laughs> the Unimbodied. ultimatum the ultimatum a new queer word ultimatum queer love will be included as well as selling sunset yes which is coming back uh in the month of may which is just in like three days it's we're gonna me be- it's me the dozing month of may in the very month of may the filler that's what flowers keep <laughs> oh that women's choir god i loved it when women's choir sang that song I used to just sit was that in high choir. school? Oh, middle school too. I used to just sit on the floor and just listen to the women in choir sing and think that is so pretty. Wish I could how sing I, like that. How can I do that? My heart's in the highland. My Stop. heart is not here. All right, we gotta go. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Until then, it's what poodle? Oh, uh, z- my, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> my, uh. Anchors, Anchors are gay. Are gay. <laughs>